Uh, this is a really uh, different podcast than normally. You hear me talk English. Most of the times it's Dutch, of course, but we're going to do this in English the best I can. Uh, but today we are in, in, in Volt, my own place, of course. Uh, still working here, yes. We're still open. And that brings us uh, to uh, to one of the bands that are playing here. For 30 people sold out, Will Fairhead and the Ghouls. I'm saying that right, isn't it? Uh, goal. 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 That's, yeah, it's more, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. I can't. Yeah. Goal. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if I just say it wrong, but it's... Uh, That's all right. It's, uh, we, we're going to try this. We just recorded uh, uh, two uh, uh, videos. We're uh, going to edit and, and, and release them later. If you, look at, if you want to look at the video of this podcast, that's possible on YouTube and Facebook, and you'll see me standing and I'm turning my back to you. Sorry, people. But then I can look at those four guys. That's easier to have a conversation. And I'm standing in there sitting for everyone that's listening. I want to have a little bit of vibe. But we are in the main hall of Popodium Vault um, because we just recorded here. That's easier to do the podcast here as well. But I wanted to chat with you about... What's happening these days? Because we should have met over a month ago, I think. That was the original plan. But then the UK happened yeah, <laughs> with yeah. some difficult stuff. But maybe uh, let's start with a uh, short introduction of each other. And uh, um, I'm Kilian. I play the bass in the band. I'm Bob. I play the drums. <laughs> I'm Will. I do the singing. <laughs> I'm the guitar. And a bit of guitar. I'm Eddie and I'm the lead guitarist and rhythm guitarist. And some vocals as well. And a bit of backing vocals, yeah. Yeah, so four guys on the road with music. That's right. We heard that before. <laughs> but not, not like this. Not, not like, like this, this. <laughs> exactly. But that you can hear on the session videos or just uh, YouTube and listen on Spotify to the uh, EP. That's right? EP. Yeah. 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 Um, now, now, now we know all of you a little bit, by name at least, and what you're uh, playing. Um, how did the uh, band became a band like this? How long ago was that? Well, um, we all came together, the four of us, in January this year. So um, That's new. Yeah, that's pretty new. Fresh out of package. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's been, it's been, it's been new. I've, I've known, I've known Killian for a couple of years. Um, we we met playing in another band in London called Shackle Free, so we played together in that band. And then last year, late last year, I asked Killian if he would uh, join me for uh, for a concert that I was putting on. So Killian started playing with me, and then um, well, I met uh, I met I met Bob in uh, the Northern Soul uh, again in London, a blues jam. Um, and we had a play together that night, didn't we? Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you don't talk into the mic, yeah. nobody will hear you. <laughs> yeah, basically how I met Vel was completely out of the blue. Like we just turned out, turned out to go to the same session on the same night, uh, which was, was basically maybe already written in the universe if we should meet there, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, if we didn't went to the same session on the same night, we, yeah, I would have possibly not be here and Vel maybe also... Uh, we would we still have been in London, maybe? Who knows? So yeah, we we just met at the session on a Tuesday night in London, in North London, I remember, and um, and then uh, we just had a chat after we played, I guess. Yeah, we f we fell in love. We fell in love. Yeah, <laughs> that's when the magic happened, and uh, and then we uh, we had our first rehearsal with Kelly in in December, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And then um, and then Eddie joined in January. Uh, I'd known Eddie for about a year or 18 months because um, he's a fellow northerner, you see. So I think we first bonded over gravy and another... <laughs> yeah, Yorkshire tea. Yeah. Yorkshire tea, yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah. I actually let you down as as your bassist. I, you were going to bring me on as a bass player before... Before Was it for the same... Yeah, thing? it was either bass or... I think it was drums, actually. I don't it know. I drum. think it was bass. I, I think was it? Was it? Yeah, it was bass guitar, yeah. I don't know. I but I don't remember because I used to run this jam night in Camden and um, I remember you coming over a couple of times and we had a bit of a play and I played a bit of drums for you. Um, and yeah, yeah, it was quite an interesting uh, dynamic uh, difference that, that just came in, you know, uh, it was quite interesting. But um, then come sort of the new year, uh, 2020 came, um, 
he rang me up, Will rang me up and uh, and asked me to, to play some lead guitar. Um, and uh, yeah, I was like, because at the point I was, uh, I was quite, didn't really like saying yes to a lot of things, but then I felt like a new person at, at, in the new year, and I th- and I thought, right, I'm going to start saying yes to more things, and good good job I did, because because now I'm in the band, so so here we are, and and, and in Holland, and and uh, yeah, it's great. So yeah. Yeah. there but, you go. But when you start asking those people, meeting those people, do you have something in mind that the sound should be for the future, or is it more like together, the four of you? Yeah, we want to be a band and. Maybe this is the sound, or how do you create a sound like this? Well, I think you know, I, 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 I'd, I, I'd been playing solo for a few years, so I'd, I'd, I suppose my songwriting had matured quite a bit, and so I was in a position where I had something myself, and then when the fellas started playing with me because they're all really sympathetic, very amazing players. It, we were able to to sort of, they were always supporting me. And also as a collective, we started to grow. And then really the sound that we have now is is a combination of um, of everybody's uh, everybody's feeling and everybody's everybody's kind of style. And, and certainly for, for me, um, I'm playing a much broader spectrum of music with these guys than I was ever able to play by myself, you know. So I guess it's kind of come organically, you know. Everybody's chipped in and then we've got to the place where we've got just because we've played a lot together in a short space of time. So we're... We sound a bit more like a band that's been around for a while, I think, than uh, than a band as new as we are. And are those songs new songs you written together, or are they from your previous years as a solo artist? Um, most of them are new. Uh, we we do still play some songs in the set, which are a bit older songs of of mine, but a, a lot of the songs that we play are songs that have only come into being since we've been together, um, and some some of the songs as we grow there's a bit more collaboration with the songwriting that's happening as well um so <clears throat> i think we just need to keep playing and developing and uh, see where we end up you know and if you uh you, you talk about uh playing a lot of gigs in a short time yeah that has to be january february and then somewhere it ended yeah yeah right yeah yeah, that, that's that, that's what we thought as well. Um, but that's where the, the whole Impossible Tour came in, in in August. Because we had this idea like, okay, Corona is fucking up actually almost everything. And why is it not an idea to maybe just go against the stream and, and try something different and try to maybe arrange gigs um, ourselves and, and see and and get get opportunities out of places that we visit. What was allowed in, in, in London or in the UK for that matter? Not much. <laughs> What what was allowed? Yeah, um, because we had a short lockdown that was just everything went from a hundred to zero, but then building up slowly again, pretty quickly maybe. Yeah, well, I think that was how it was in England as well. I mean, it was it was it was sad because we'd um, we'd started to become um, you know really close friends as well as bandmates, and then we had to split up for a while. You know, uh, Killian, you had to go back to, you know, the yeah. south of France. Um, Bob, you came back back here to Holland, and then um, me and Eddie. <laughs> we, I, mean, I moved to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the big world. <laughs> yeah, um, and and so there wasn't much going on, um, and I think we started to get a bit of an idea for how to go forward um, once. Eddie and I, we we started playing on the streets a bit in the in, during the lockdown. Okay, we did this thing in England called the clap for the NHS. So on a Thursday night, people would come out of their houses and they would clap oh, okay, to yeah. thank the health workers. Mm-hmm. And so Eddie and I ended up going out on a Thursday night in our local community and uh, 
chatting with neighbors that we'd never spoken with before and it, playing music and and so what happened was we managed to pull together um a whole community of people on a thursday night um you know at socially distanced you know people were still mm -hmm. scared but the music was doing what it should do which is bring people together and um i think it was very good for us as well wasn't it eddie it's quite funny because um we no we had no idea that what was what we were going to be um in for um before we started doing doing the gigs and and um as we started to sort of get to know who who lived on the same road as us um the Stuart who was sorry Rupert um who was lived on one of the, in one of the houses he happened to have a PA system and uh, he happened to play drums and then his neighbor Stuart happened to be a bass player and then a few doors down from that was John Spaniel the p piano player yeah. and then so on and so on and then by the end of it we had a 10 piece band <laughs> neighborhood band joining yeah. us on Full the street orchestra. and uh and it was just really cool, and we did some great, some like few covers and and a few of your songs, and yeah. uh, and then and then uh, we ended but up. But this doing... was all allowed. Well, it was. I think it was. Um, okay. -ish. It was. It was. It, it wasn't n not allowed what we were doing, um, but I think in communities right across the UK, uh, especially on a Thursday night, there was there was a call for for something to happen you know people were lo were locked up and um still to still now still now when we get out and we play on the streets there are people who get emotional because they haven't heard live music played in that way for so long mm -hmm. because they've been locked up so i can't tell you the full legality of it um but what i can tell you is that um, it was the right thing to do. It was necessary. It was necessary. Yeah. yeah. People needed it. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 uh, well, the result was that Eddie and I we were doing what we should be doing, which is playing music. And um, for our community, they had something to bring bring them together. And so that was the seed, um, the seed which gave us this idea that maybe maybe we could go out into the world at this time and and uh, rely on ourselves and and try and bring music to people despite the circumstances we're very lucky that we're playing here tomorrow night but there just isn't this option for musicians at the moment to do that so we had to we had to to figure out how we could make it work just ourselves and the cool thing is is that all of these guys are all badass <laughs> you know, and they're all all risk takers, you know, and all caring as yep. well. Not just the, you know, I mean, right there, Killian. We call him the Gypsy King. <laughs> you know, we 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 had to get Killian on the road. Like he's he's the Gypsy Master on the road. You know, and 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 I think all of us um, are are seeing that. You know what? You can go back to basics because this is what musicians have done since time began mm -hmm. you know medieval troubadours traveling from town to town nobody knows who they are but they turn up and they create something and then they go and uh, that's what we have to do until until the world uh, is done changing or it's changed into whatever it's gonna be yeah that's of course it, it's a it's a beautiful what you just said because a lot of small bands are trying things but the bigger bands are just quiet. They're like, we can't go on tour. Bye. And they just change everything for a year or two years and gonna be quiet, it looks yeah. like. Sometimes a live stream or charity event, of course, but yeah. But not okay, let's help the community go to people and 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 do a show, whatever that means. I mean, I understand that if you're a, a Beyonce or a U2, it's a, of course difficult to do it that way. Yeah. But it can help a lot of people because you're bringing the music to the ones that are needing it right now. That's right. So that's beautiful what, what you just said. Um, you called the tour the impossible tour, part one normally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what was the idea to do? Uh, just the UK traveling around or? Well. <laughs> whole world touring uh, 
buying an op- own plane and yeah basically a world tour but obviously <laughs> that didn't happen uh, no um, no the idea was to go to uh, to the UK and move from there like start start from our home base which is London obviously and then move from London towards the countryside and then eventually cross the channel and go to mainland Europe uh, where we would have had the gig here in, in Volt as well and then I also uh, already arranged some gigs in Berlin uh, and then you also might have gone to France where Killian is from um but then eventually, then just a couple of days before we actually um, started touring, we had like a band meeting somewhere in Camden and met with the team. And um, then literally the same day or the day after, I don't really remember, um, the Dutch government announced, the, um, of, uh, the the UK government announced the new quarantine rules for people from traveling from the UK to Holland, that they all have to go into self-quarantine for two weeks when they, ca- when they came back, which is still uh, present at the moment. Um, so basically, that all shifted our completely. Pl- uh, that shifted our plans completely, and um, that's why we decided to stay in the UK. So we basically toured uh, throughout England and also a bit of Wales, and basically we filled three and a half weeks and played quite a lot, and also sometimes even two times a day. Um, so yeah, so we made it work in our own way. Um, and now for part two, the impossible tour part two, we. We actually uh, had to move to the to the mainland Europe because in the UK is nothing nothing is possible anymore because of the new restrictions they have there. Yeah, it, it, it went the other way around. It was just like exactly uh, from 100 to 80, 60, and less, and now it's zero, yeah. and we are building up slowly. Yeah. Well, I mean, next Tuesday maybe everything changes again. We don't know, but uh, we have to this look. This is at kind some of the whole reason why we've we've done this whole tour because we haven't been able to. The, the part of the impossible tour is that we kind of haven't really got a plan and we haven't really had any sort of direction. We've had pinpoints that we've, that we've met, for example, this mm-hmm. uh, podcast and the, the show that we're going to be doing tomorrow. But, um, you know, um, oh, my brain. C- carry on. Well, we don't, we don't have a, um, we don't have a set, a set um, route or, uh, you know, mm-hmm. A, a, a plan as such we we just know what we can do and it's a try it's trial and error you know so we we figured out in the first tour that we can go from town to town and nobody needs to know who we are we can turn up wearing a uh, very subtle outfits mm-hmm. like this uh, and people will look at us and then we can set up on the street where there are people already you know and um, and we can play and we can get that vibe going on the street and we can get people interested in, in, in what we have to offer. And so we arrive in a town, we look at where in the town would be the coolest place to play and we try and organise some kind of gig, some kind of concert in town. Because in the UK, when we, when we started out on the Impossible Tour, you could still do concerts in pubs. Most pubs... Mm wouldn't do it because they're scared yeah of course, you know yeah. and it's understandable because the government in the UK has um, has given themselves a great deal of power um, so they can close down a venue or a pub mm-hmm. like that yeah uh, if they call the coronavirus that's it they can yeah, get rid of it that's the same here you know yeah. and so pubs are scared but there are I have to say, uh, and if you eventually, when our documentary comes out, you'll see there are some um, some badass uh, people still in the UK who who can still put things on in a safe way. Yep. This is the thing; none of it is is unsafe. No, but that's uh, that's all also the same here. We we talked about a show for seventy eight people, and that's just the bigger ver- version of this room. That's the same seating plan, one point five meters b- between two people and stuff like that. But they are just allowing us thirty per room, so that's that's the the max capacity. Even if you are the biggest venue in the Netherlands with seventeen thousand people, yeah. thirty is the max. Well, <laughs> it's, it's it's it sounds so strange, but of course you have to put somewhere a limit because otherwise it's gonna be all the way, and everyone is yeah. But there I can do two thousand people, and there they only allowed five. Yeah, yeah, of course, but that's the. The space you have, that's that's the difference. But if you do it in a pub, most pubs, in my mind, are also smaller than rooms like this and have maybe a different ventilation or something like that, yeah. a different air code. So it's 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 also it's always difficult. So it's really great to hear 
that some pub owners are just like, just do it. Yeah. Let's keep it safe yeah. the best we can because uh, th there's nothing really safe, of course. And there's always a possibility um, to, 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 to cause the virus or something. Um, but that's that's yeah how it how it goes of course. But you were saying mainland Europe, so that means if the Netherlands decide something tomorrow night, it can ruin your whole trip for the rest of the mm -hmm. tour. Yep. Or something in Germany was saying you are not allowed to go to these parts and you are at that moment at that place. That's good. Give and a this lot is kind of, of the reason, like going back that's to that's why it's impossible. What, what I was going to say, this is the impossible tour, you know, and and the th and the thing is, is uh, we we're doing it um, not because because all these rules they put in place, they can't really make their minds up that what what they actually how they're going to do this, you know. Um, they certainly with the with the government in well majority of governments, I guess yeah. they they can only do so much, and I I understand what they're trying to do, but on on this side, it's so much harder. Because what does a rule mean if you're changing the rules every day? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're changing it all the time, then it becomes something that that people aren't going to play by that. And and you know we, it's it's not going to stop us in a, in our path really because you know it's it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, just just make a clear rule for all of Europe, and yeah. we'll follow. Yeah, but, um, but but I understand. You know, it, it's kind of like a, too. Yeah. a balance because. Yeah. You know, they can only do so much. But uh, you came last week to Europe or the week before? Uh, two weeks ago. Two uh, weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, Bob called me, yeah, we want to do some promotional stuff in, in the region. Uh, and we found out really quickly that that is impossible <laughs> uh, because of some, uh, some rules. Uh, playing on the streets is not allowed in the Netherlands. It's always been a, been a pain we, in the ass. We head. discovered that as soon as we got to Holland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you decided to go to Germany, right? Yeah. What uh, What did you do over there? Uh, we just did the same as in the first tour for the first week. So we just traveled to different cities, play in the street. We didn't really get any concerts in any pubs. So no. mostly... However. Play in the street, however, for the oh. second week. Yeah. What happened? Uh, after you, after you. Well, we had this idea to organize a big gig ourselves, like maybe in a barn, in a farm or something okay, like that. Yeah. And we were in, which city were we in when we talked to you? We were in Kuplands. Right, so we were in Kuplands, just parked outside the, somewhere, and we were looking for electricity for the van to charge the batteries and all of that. And then you met... Jamel. Jamel. Jamel, yeah. Who... Basically, told us of a location in the forest <laughs> where it's like a co communal area, yep. like community area. Mm -hmm. And he told us that we should go there, pretty much. Yeah. And then we went there. Yeah. Well, he he said he said um, he said I I I think if you go there, you will stay one week. <laughs> and I, I thought, no, 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 we're not going to stay anywhere one week. We're on the road. We're traveling around. But the thing was, was well, like Killian said, we were looking for electricity because no one would have us to stay. We can't go to a campsite with our vehicles because they don't accept English people at the moment mm -hmm. uh, because of the virus. So we needed quite a few things. Uh, and so when Jamel told us about this place, we, we headed there. And on the way there, um, our gear van broke down um, because it was such a, it was such a, we had to climb this mountain up, up the side of this mountain to get there, and it was crazy. Um, and so it was a bit hectic getting there. But eventually, uh, one week later, um, we were still at the place, and we managed to put on our own concert um, because at this place in the forest, they've built a stage uh, overlooking a field. Um, there's It's a wonderful place, magical, um, where... Through the summer, communities, you know, they arrive there and the, the owners, they don't charge anything. They say, you come and you help with anything that needs help. You maybe donate some money to chip in, mm -hmm. but it's a very old way, a more ancient way of uh, surviving. And so we, we went there and we spoke with the owners and they said, okay, you guys can put on a concert. So then we went to the local towns 
and we played on the streets, made ourselves some money, told a few people about the concert, said that there's going to be this concert in the woods. We're arranging it ourselves. Um, we can make sure it's safe. You know, it, we took control of it ourselves. And then, um, yeah, on, on Saturday night, we, we had this great concert in the woods and we, we, we brought people there safely and um, had a had a wonderful night of, of, of music and uh, it was all outdoors, you know, so round the fire, you know, lots of fireplaces to keep us warm. It was fantastic. And, and we also had to play the role of taxi driver at one point to bring people to the concert as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to pick up, had to pick up some people. Um, and uh, some there were there were people there who had never been to a concert before, you know. So that was their first experience of a concert being picked up. Oh, that's surreal. Yeah, yeah, and taken to the forest in a motorhome <laughs> by a guy wearing a silly coat, you know. That was their first experience. So you have to start somewhere. You do. Better can be this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that means you're being uh, 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 not traveling around. As much as you thought you would be. Yeah. Um, Not as much as doing the um, possible two parts. I think your microphone is off. Can you switch it on? If you, yeah, exactly. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Huh. Uh, I, we didn't travel as much as doing uh, the impossible two part one because then we literally, literally drove to another city almost every day. I guess like obviously like only for one or two nights. Yeah. Um, but obviously the circumstances were also a bit different than this than this period where we're living in right now. Yeah. And 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 I think a thing that we we set out on this tour with the intention that we would we would ex we would experiment and we would see if we could put on a proper concert because we have all our gear mm -hmm. we have full PA system we have lights we have all the all the backline so when we play on the streets we play with a simple setup and it's great people love it. They help us with money. They uh, they follow us online. It's it's great for our music and it's it's brilliant. But we have the um, aspirations as a band to put on the best, most memorable concerts that we can put on. And nobody, apart from a few places, is going to help us do that. So we we set out with the intention that we would put on our own concert safely and. And, and and make the best of it and we achieved it and it took us seven or eight days at this one place to do that but it was our first time doing that and I think that as an experiment it was a success and I think it gives us more hope for the future because we don't know what's going to happen um, we don't know how many venues are going to be left after what after what's going on with this coronavirus so it might be that musicians have a more greater responsibility than ever before not just to play the music but to but to work hard and arrange you know bring people together to a safe place a place that is going to give them hope you know and that's what that's I, that's what i think we're going to move towards as a world it's a it's a, a whole different view on uh being a band being a musician because normally it's just i write music i play a song i do that there on the stage and I release it online and that's my job Yeah. and now it's more like working more active to get that job to make it possible literally with uh, with a stage or a light or a PA yeah. and it's um, it's a big step for a lot of bands I think but that you are being um, on that path already and being this forward already you're one of the few touring bands I mean that's the, the that's of course probably the only No, not the only. They don't get that credit yet because. In, oh, don't uh, tell us about that. We don't <laughs> want to be known as the only. No, but uh, no, but the, the, you might be one of the only touring bands across Europe that are traveling to different yeah. uh, countries. Mm. Because in the Netherlands, we have tours. There are still tours going on. There are still bands that are doing proper tours with seven, eight dates in different venues. Yeah, but. They are Dutch. They stay in the Netherlands and yeah. they play here, but they don't go outside to a different country and and with different rules. And that's what you're looking looking for, yeah. like uh, trying to to get on different uh, in different regions and different rule settings and 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 what's what's possible everywhere. Um, tomorrow, and uh, I have to check the date. It's uh, the 23rd of October. 
that's a sold out show in Volt. I can still keep telling it's sold out, but it's 30 people, but it's sold out because that's on the poster. Yeah. That's the main thing. Um, um, of course, that's going to be a, a, a great show indoors with the safe, uh, safe settings. But a total different thing than being outdoors in a field with a beautiful. You know, this, this, we can say a lot about fold, but that's not a beautiful view. Uh, <laughs> it's a different view. Um, Depends what ladies come and watch us, really. No, but if you look at the wall, come on, that's not the, <laughs> the best wall ever made. Um, no, but um, uh, so still so looking nice for a nice hair wall. and makeup like crew. The if there's anybody out there who'd like to join the gang. So I have to release it really quickly and then they have to <laughs> listen to it tomorrow morning and then maybe around noon someone will stand in front of the door. Who knows? Yeah. Um, uh, no, but but what's next then? Are you still have some shows in the weekend or are you going to France afterwards or what's the plan? Well, uh, in terms of what's next, well... Not a clue. Yeah, we don't know exactly. And we just kick you out tomorrow tour. evening yeah. and... You'll be off again. You kick yeah, us out, yeah, and we'll, we'll probably just... stay in the car park. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we 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 don't know exactly where we're gonna go. Um, we know there's a few places we'd definitely like to go. Uh, we'd love to go and go and see Berlin. You know, we'd let we'd love to get there at some point. Um, but I guess our, our kind of big hope is that. Um, at the end of this tour, whenever it may be, we're going to be able to get recording. Um, you know, I think we're ready to record an album. We've got enough songs and we've been, we're never going to be more together mm -hmm. than we are right now, you know. So I think wherever we end up over the coming weeks, hopefully we're going to find ourselves in a recording studio eventually and spend a couple of weeks there because that's where I think we're going to get the real payoff for all this hard work that we've been doing. And is that studio on this side of the waters or back in the UK? Well, we'll we'll have to we'll have to see about that. We've we've we might There's nothing booked yet. No, there's okay. nothing booked yet. We've maybe got a few things that could that could happen. Options, so we yeah. just need to fight we need to work on them and see 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 where we go. So that gives you still room to to go on the tour still traveling for the next few weeks yeah. and after that find a place where you can do it yeah uh, and bring it all together in an album yeah that would be amazing that would be great yeah and, and basically what will just said about like not knowing what's going to happen after for example this friday um that basically is the whole philosophy behind the whole impossible tour that we actually don't know what the hell we are doing <laughs> and just and just follow Playing music would be a great start <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's what we try yeah, that, that's what we do but but more in terms of like why where we go to uh what we're going to do there yeah. um so it, it all just happens in the moment uh, just like for example the concert that will just described in the woods also just happened in the moment we mm -hmm. had this idea of like setting up uh, our own concert um and then this uh, this happened by complete coincidence and we bumped into, into the right pe uh, people to to put it off um and that's basically also another great example of um of the thing that we are doing and i had a chat with that about will a couple of weeks ago that actually what happens when you do something that is not really normal and that's that's a little bit strange maybe you also meet people who want to do that extra little bit for you because mm. you do something that is really not like normal and they want to be a part of that i want to be a part of this kind of experience and that's exactly what also happened in the woods last week i guess and, and what also happened lots of times during the possible tour part one in the uk um yeah so that's that's i think that's quite a beautiful thing that we already witnessed a couple of times yeah yeah i think it's beautiful that you are uh setting your mind together as a band and uh, as persons separately that this is possible and still call, call it the impossible tour but uh that that making things happen is always just finding the right way to do it and of course this is a, a, a different uh, uh time and it's a difficult time and everyone is scared and but music, as you said before, will uh, the, the, it brings people together. And if it's uh, standing uh, outside clapping for the uh, volunteers, for the uh, uh, um, health workers and, 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 uh, and other people that are important at this moment, that's a, a possibility. But the people that are, have to stay at home for six months 
and didn't hear any music is yeah. also important to hear music again because yeah. it's it's bringing so so much life to your own life and yeah. others life um let's ra- wrap up here because uh i have to do another different podcast somewhere else in the in, in the netherlands so i have to travel again and record a session so uh, for the people that are listening uh, you can expect two podcasts uh in a short period of time and i'm going to record the ne- next one on saturday so it's three podcasts in two and a half days um uh, but they can find you on socials. I will put the links in the description, of course. Yeah, and, and, and speaking about socials, uh, tomorrow the concert will also be live streamed on our, on our Facebook page as well. I will uh, uh, write that down in the description as well. But cool. that means that you only can, if you hear this on the 23rd, then it's tonight and otherwise you missed it. And are you keeping it online or is yeah, it Yeah, it will be safe. So you can look back and search for the date on the on the Facebook page of the band and um, you will see the full concert at Popolium Vault with a sold out seating plan of 30 yeah. people. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and you know if if uh, if you follow us online then um, there's going to be all kinds of interesting things that you're going to be seeing because we've been recording and documenting this whole journey that we've been on. And we've been recording our own live performances recently in some very special locations. So there's going to be a lot of really, really cool stuff to to listen to and to to watch and enjoy. So if you give us a like on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, check out the website, you're going to find the out. The more links you it. name, the more I have to put in the description. You know that. It's more work for me. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that, Shirley. <laughs> no, it's you've, okay, worked, it's you've, okay. worked, you've worked very hard for us already. <laughs> and uh, But like Bob was saying about going the extra mile yep. uh, for uh, for people doing strange things, uh, well, you're you're another example of someone Thank who's uh, yeah. willing to do that. Always try to, to make it possible for bands in every way that I can. Yeah. And with my own limitations, of course. But yeah, where I can help, uh, I... I Please, please do. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this podcast. Links in the descriptions, and watch the live stream live or back again. Or if you're a tri- time traveler, you can go ahead of, and then, you can watch it now. Can't yeah, you can watch yeah. it now. In yeah. Fact. yeah, yeah. Everything is possible. You can watch it in the two weeks through. ago if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's wrap up. Uh, thank you very much, and um, thank uh, you for for the listeners. Um, there is a new podcast almost ready for you. So um, you can listen to that one as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank Thank you. you. Thank you.